Nah, no Yo, where you at? Where you at? My homie Lou on the mic The mother hosts need to stop They ain't doing it right If you ain't turned in the loop What you doing with your life? Conversation so sharp It ain't your usual night We got athletes Entrepreneurs Even celebrities Politicians discuss Nationwide discrepancies Hardcore tackling issues In our community Spreading knowledge, knowledge Creating the opportunity Tune in live with light skin Tune in live with light skin Tune in live with light skin loose. Tune in live with light skin loose. Light skin loose. Light skin loose. Light skin loose. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. What's up, everybody? This your boy, Light Skin Lou, and I am back. Back for another episode, back with another special guest. And let me tell you, I'm so excited to interview this guy and have him on the show. But before I introduce him, let me give special thanks to Anthony, the entertainer Peterson, for dropping by last week and showing love. And also thanking you guys for your continued support for the channel. So hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And now let me introduce my next guest. This guy is an Olympic featherweight boxer from Barbados. He is currently 15 and one with five KOs. And he has been in the States for close to 10 years and has made quite a name for itself in the boxing world and has a fight coming up October the 1st. So get your tickets. He is none other than Cobia, Soldier Breedy. That's right. That's right. Cobia, I can't thank you enough for coming mm -hmm. to the show, uh, knowing that you have a fight coming up on October the 1st. Thank you for taking the time. Um, so much to talk about. So let's stab right into it, man. Um, mm -hmm. How's training camp going? Man, training camp is going real good. You know, first of all, I got to give my shout out to my Caribbean people, my, um, my Barbados people. My people in the DMV, I got a shout out um my team, my manager was Floyd Seymour and uh, Derek, you know, uh, and I want to give a shout out to Rising Star Promotion, Dusty and them guys, for everybody that making this happen. I'm real excited, man. Real excited, you know. You know, my slogan, <laughs> told you, war ready, stay ready, don't get ready. You know, training camp been different, you know what I mean? Been back, me and my coach took a trip. You know, it's been a year. Me and Coach took a trip down to Barbados. You know, we went and did some soldier duties. We went and feed the homeless. We went and get back to the community. You know what I mean? We did some little swimming out there. We did. We went back to the roots. <laughs> now we back here in the U.S. October first. We were ready. That's right. I love it. Look how he's talking, man. He's talking. He's more excited than me, and I, nobody gets more excited than me, man. Um, you said some key words. You went back home, um, and that's where mm -hmm. I want to start at. I want to start at the beginning. Kobe, because I want everybody out there to know how did you get into boxing? Man, for, man, I started boxing in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> my, my cousin, my nah, for real, my cousin. Um, used they, it, we used to have boxing events out in the streets, and we everybody just put on gloves and they had a problem. And we just boxed, and I was I was the smallest guy out of everybody, and I was I was putting hands on everybody, and then wow. from. There, from there, I went to from there, I went to high school, and I took boxing very serious at the age of fourteen. And then I got an opportunity to join the Barbados Defense Force, join the military, and I got to box for the military. And I traveled the world. Um, I did, you know, I was in the army. That's why I was a soldier, you know, soldier being in the military. And then after the army, you know, what I mean, I just decided to come over here to the U.S. to um, pursue my professional career. Wow, yeah, you're doing a good job, man. I can't tell you. Um, I've done, I watch a couple of your fights, man, and I'm impressed with your style, how you're able to turn it, you know, do both box and get in there and mix it up. Uh, mm -hmm. This fight that you got coming up October 1st, I put it down as unfinished business. Mm -hmm. You and this guy, uh, what's his name? Su Suleiman Segwa. I don't know if I pronounce his <laughs> name, but I'm terrible with names. You guys had a no contest, um, so it's unfinished business. 
let the people mm-hmm. out there know what to expect October the 1st and why it's unfinished business. Man, I'm going to tell you one thing, right? Y'all got to listen to this very carefully, right? The I'm story. all ears. Yeah, look, let's just listen. You, you, you got to hear it. If you didn't hear it, if you didn't hear it, yeah, don't miss it. I, I, I hear a heartbeat and it's rapidly beating rapidly. You know what that means? Somebody is nervous. Suleiman, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. War ready. I'm coming. That's right. I love it. I love it, man. So y- y'all hear what he said, man. He said that October 1st is going to be all out war. Mm-hmm. So, so you can't look. I love get, it. Um, make sure y'all bring your camouflage. You know what I mean? We want we <laughs> on that rack. We want man. Come on. Man, I, I, as I was looking, doing research on you, I was talking to a couple of fighters, and they said what you said. You know, you always war ready. You've mm-hmm. been at the Headbangers camp. You've been with the Russells. You've been all over the place, man. So when you able to go to these places and, you know, hold your own, does that help you mm-hmm. going into fights, like the fight that you're going into October 1st? Mm-hmm. So is that is that 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 prepares you for that? Mhm. Hold up. Can can you hear me? Yeah, that's yeah. I it, it's it's frozen a little bit. I don't know if it's on my end. Am I? Yeah, yeah am I frozen? Yeah, we back. We back. I can see. Oh, you. there we go. Yeah, yeah. I was saying that you travel the world around here, man, with the Russells, the Headbangers. Um, so I'm gonna imagine that it, it helps you uh, when he's ready to go to war. Yeah, I did, yeah. My, I don't know what happens, but we we lost uh, a little signal there just now. Hold up. I think it might be on his end because I can hear everything. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think it's me. All right, hold up. We we having a little technical difficulties, y'all. Uh, bear with us for a second. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear. I, I can hear. It's like oh, I'm sorry. It's, I don't know what's going on. I don't. I don't think I'm. Yeah, he's he sound. He's gonna have to go out and come back in. Kobe, if you can hear, go out and come back in. And I'll let you yeah. back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in now. Okay. You easy. good? Yeah, okay. I'm good. Okay. Now, now, where was I? I was saying that, um, you know. Being at the Headbangers, being with the Russells, having time with them, that it helps you propel in fights mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. fights that you have coming up now. Mm-hmm. Say so, that one more time. You no, know, I said when you with the Russells, you've been with the Headbangers, you've been to gyms, and you were able to hold your own. Does that prepare you for, you know, your fight coming up October 1st? Yeah, that, you know, that and my soldier background, I've been in there with. Sean Porter, been in there with Lamont Peterson, been in there with Annie Peterson, been in there with Javante Tank. I've been in there, you know, with Mike Foxes and them. I've been, you know, I, I've been in there with a lot of good fighters, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, like I said, I'm war ready for whatever anybody come with, you know what I mean? I've been through it all. So let's get it on October 1st. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, one fight that stood out to me, I was looking at your fight on Showtime that you had mm-hmm. with King Tug, right? You mm-hmm. show tough toughness, fortitude. You were knocked down twice in the first, in mm-hmm. the, I think the first and second round, and mm-hmm. you got back up mm-hmm. and you went to a split decision. What did you mm-hmm. learn about yourself in that fight, Kobe? What did I learn myself? You know what? I I always I knew I always had it in me. You know, I was <laughs> soldier. I knew I always had it in me. You know what I mean? All I did was listen to my coach. You know, listen to my corner. You know, all the hard work we put in, it just shows in the ring. You know, soldier mentality. Like, like when people say soldier, you know, me and my coach, we, you know, sometimes we go to the zoo, might fight with like some gorillas. You know, we might do some <laughs> swim with the sharks. You know, we do soldier stuff. We do out of the ordinary, man. We this ain't no weird. You watch Captain America? Yes, I do. Ultimate soldier. Yes, that's, that's me, right. Ultimate. We do this. Yeah, I love it, man. You see how excited this guy is, man. He excited to get back in the ring, man. Yeah. So my next question, can you can you hear me? Yeah, my next question is uh Derek Curry. 
what's it been like working with uh DC Dirk Curry? Man, it been it been real good. You know, you know, all you know, he 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 really liked me for being um the man I am. You know, I just stick to business. I just work out, gym, no drama. Um, I'm a, I'm a, you know I me. Mean? He like my character, as a real soldier. You know him and Coach Floyd, they always in my ear, doing this, doing that. I'm not hanging with the wrong crowd. You know I me. Mean? You know you know in the army they say formation. I always stay in formation. I always stay in line. Always keep my rank. Always keep it going. And that's what makes me the man I am today and the soldier I am right now. That's right. That's right, man. You can't make this up, man. I'm glad you said soldier because you did three years in the military. Um, Two-part mm -hmm. question. What was it like and what lessons did you take from the military that you can apply to boxing and in life itself? Yeah, discipline. Things might not never go your way. Um, always got to be sharp. You always got to get your antennas up, you know. You know, people screaming at you, telling you stuff you don't like. You know what you do? You a bigger man. You walk away. You know, you listen to your others. Um, they teach you. They they teach you take care of your own. You know what I mean? Um, and it, one thing they one number one thing they always show that that I respect and that it takes me is a team sport in the army. Is a team. Yeah, just because I'm just the fighter in the ring, the soldier in the ring, mm -hmm. I got my. My 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 rank officers is leading me to victory or leading me to to success. So all that stuff, the army trade the BDF sports program. I want to shout them out for everything they um uh, implemented in us. Not only me and some, they had other guys with me that went ahead and did good. They really teach us discipline, and and grinders and go get it. That's right. That's right, man. That's what the military is all about. It teaches you how to. Be a man and be strong and be tough. Um, There's another guy in your life that um, mm. I think you guys have a great relationship. Uh, Coach Floyd, mm. how did the relationship come about and how has it been? Man, me and Coach Floyd, we met in India in 2011. In India, it, the Commonwealth Games is all the countries the Queen conquered back in the day. And they have these games like Olympics, Commonwealth Games. We met. He was on the Bahamas team. I'm on the Barbados team. We linked up. He was like, I was working with one of his spawn one of his guys from Bahamas. And he was like, I, I'm, I'm a hard fighter. And then we met again in Panama. And, and then he was like, Man, you should come to America after you leave the army, you know, and come over here in the turn pro. I'm not thinking, we're not thinking about that, you know, that we would have this long relationship like a father and son born right now. But when I came here, I went to Connecticut with my family. Then we came, I came down here for two weeks. Two weeks ended up being six months. Six months ended up being seven ten years and right now we still to we still here together to this day i want to shout out his wife miss lisa i want to shout out um, um his family you know for taking it taking me in um and helping me support support me to get to this point i am right now and yeah we we here we and we ready for we ready for whatever that's right that's right if y'all just getting in here man hit that like button and if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button we in here chopping it up with cobia soldier breedy in the building he got a fight on october the first he already told you it's gonna be all out war so get your tickets so mm -hmm. cobia you said earlier that you go back home um you get back to the homeless shelters and things like that i, I also watched the video where you were teaching the young kids boxing and how they were looking up to you so what, mm -hmm. what's that experience like man that's 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 an experience that me and coach Flo we talked about for my first fight we was like one of these days we're gonna go back and do something back home you know we ain't, ain't gonna be the biggest and that 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 literally came through we talked about this back in 2013 and 20 2021 we doing what we said we was gonna do and that was real good and real nice, like for for a young man to give back, you know, to the homeless shelter or give back to his school mm -hmm. where he come from, and just to give back to people, and just to show them that I was a young man just like y'all, came from Barbados, came to America, and grinding trying to get to the top, and we still doing it. That's right, man. I I love it. I was watching the video um before we came on, and it just it does a person heart because. You don't have to do it, but the fact that you're doing it and these kids know now, like the mm -hmm. path that they want to travel is doable. 
because they mm -hmm. see you do it, you know. So I, I love it, man. I love it. Keep up the um the good work. It's uh mm -hmm. it's contagious. So mm -hmm. my next question to you, Kobe, is um I watched that fight, and I meant to ask you this when it, when I asked you the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that it wasn't anybody in the stands, you know. Mm -hmm. That's down the time when COVID, when COVID mm -hmm. hit. So my next question is, how did COVID affect you back then? But did it affect you that it wasn't nobody in the crowd? Mm -hmm. No, because because it, it didn't affect me. Matter of fact, you know, being an amateur boxer, you know, sometimes you fight with nobody in the stands. Then sometimes you fight with a bunch of crazy people in the stands, right? So, and plus, I fought on PBC a couple of times where it was nobody in the stands. You know, we had a fight after the main event. Like, they calling you like, yeah, you're going to come up right now. And then, you know, the fighter didn't get knocked out. You know, so I'm I'm used to, you know, like, you know, I'm used to anything. One thing the Army teach you, you know what I mean? You got to know your surroundings. You got to know everything. You got to know. You got to prepare for the un, un, unexpected. And we was always prepared for the unexpected, even through COVID. When, when I fought King Tug, they had us on a schedule to fight, to go use the gym. You know what me and Coach Floyd is? I bought a I bought a lip ticket bike. I shipped it. I put it in the air the airplane. We took that to um when yeah. we was in Connecticut. I had a, a little a little lip ticket bike. And he we set up our little little gym in the room. We work on our schedule. We we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, look, this thing. You going when you go to war? When you going to battle? It, you can't come unprepared. You gotta be prepared. Hey, yeah. look, Kiki. This guy got it figured out, don't he? I love it, man. I love it. I want to go back to the. Um, the head, but the no contest. When mm -hmm. uh, the fighter trains, you know, he's expecting to be, I guess, to win. Of course, you can win or lose. The mm -hmm. fact that you came out with the no contest, what was your mentality, you know, after the fight? Did you, like, Man, I was, was you sad or was you, you know? I was mad. I was mad. I was angry. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like, you know what I mean? I don't like stuff like that because, you know, you just, you work so hard and you got three rounds in, you're like, ah. But, you know what I mean? I took, you know, everything happened for a reason. So this is the reason. We're going to, we're running it back October 1st. And it's going to be, it's going to be a, a different soldier than the last, last, last soldier. So it's going to be, the, it's going to be different. And it's going to be all our war. Fight, oh, fight no fire. We ain't no fireworks. We, we coming with, with gun smoke. <laughs> ah, that's right. <laughs> that's that's what, what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I like to hear, man. I love your energy because TikTok, TikTok, the fight is right around the corner and the mm -hmm. build up is here. I think they're going to have some open workouts tomorrow. So if y'all not doing anything, come out there and check these guys out. Um, Dirk Curry, my guy, special shout out to my man, Dirk Curry. Dirk Curry. He said, you're going to be a world champion at 126 or 130. When you hear mm -hmm. your guy, Dirk, say that, does that put pressure on you or do you just be like, you know what? He see good when he see it. Yeah, no pressure at all. You know, it's like it's motivation. You know what I mean? It's looking across the, you know, looking across the the, the dark road street, and you just see light on the other hand, and you gonna walk right through that, and you know it's gonna happen, and it's gonna come through. All you gotta do is, like I said, so just stay to your rank, do what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And let's go, let's go get these belts. Most first, yes. first, Let's go deal with take care of unfinished business October 1st. That's right. That's right. Last time I interviewed you, man, it was on a different platform. Um, and I and I and I gave you a scenario, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Cobia Soldier Breedy, unified champion. You take mm -hmm. that belt, those belts back mm -hmm. to Barbados. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what, what would it be like, man? What oh, yeah, they like? give me the key to the city and they shutting everything down. <laughs> Now we're having a parade, we having a party. Um, yeah, we kids not even going to school, man. The 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 soldiers gonna come greet me. You know what I mean? Yes. Red carpet, all that. You know I'm gonna make history. History. You know what I mean? I'm I'm doing it. You know I'm putting my country on my back. So uh, Barbados on my back. They gonna they gonna they gonna they, they show me love, but they gonna show me more love. You know when I get you know when I make that bigger achievement. Yeah. That's right. Speaking of achievement, that, that's going to take me to my next question. Your biggest achievement thus far, mm -hmm. what, what, what is it? My biggest achievement is so far is like, um, I want to say, I want to say life and being disciplined to what I do. 
my uh, me stick it. Don't matter the wind. Don't matter what happened in the past. I be me and my coach. We stick to what we was doing, and we we achieve greatness in what we doing. Stay in the gym. Stay focused. Stay grinding, and and just just working to get that world title. That's right, and that's the ultimate goal, man. Um, mm -hmm. Kiki, do we have any questions over in the chat? Um, none in the chat right now, but I have a couple of questions. Okay, have at it, Kiki. Okay, so um, Kobe, um, what separates you from every other fighter in your division? First and foremost, I'm a soldier. <laughs> I stay war ready. I'm from Barbados. I got the Caribbean people on me. I got my people in the DMV on me. Um, um, and and I got seven styles of fighting. I could fight any way you want me, you know. And I bring excitement and fireworks to the crowd. When they see Soldier coming, they're like, when he when they see me, they don't. It's it's just gonna be. They, they you know what some people call me a baby Sean Porter. It's, it's gonna get a little rough. It's gonna get gritty in there. You know me. You know me. It's gonna get ugly. That's me. Okay, that's right. Okay. Um, let me see. How about um what fighter or fighters um do you feel most influenced by? Um, the guy behind me right here, you can see Muhammad Ali, of course. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Miguel Cotto, Timmy Bradley, um, um, you can go um Joel Frazier. Joe Kazaki. Okay. Andy Peterson. Ah, I like that. I like that. He spoke highly of you too. He was on the show last week, man. He Lamont, spoke highly of you. Lamont, Lamont Peterson. Okay. You know, okay. even the fighters from here, DMV, Javon J. Tango, you know, Shakur, all them guys. You know what I mean? They I take pieces from all these guys and I put it in my uh, Sean Porter, of course, you know what I mean? I put it with my art and we, you know what I mean, we, we go get it. Okay, that's right. Okay, so we we do have another question in the chat. Let me see. From Demarley Thorpe, I hope I said the name right. Um, but he said, "Will you come back to Barbados after collecting that win?" Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, at first and I gotta talk. You know, me talking to the management and team because you know, right after this, I might got another. You know what I mean? Once we take care of when we take care of business, October first might have more opportunities. So, I would love to come back home, but we we will see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I think that's all for the chat. Um, I have another question. Mm -hmm. Um, Kobe, what do you want to be remembered for at the end of your career? We say that one more time. I froze a little bit. Um, what do you want to be remembered for at the end of your career? Uh, well, I, yeah, um, a true warrior, a true soldier, mm -hmm. um, a loving person, a person that gave back to the community. Um, somebody that could, somebody a little black kid could look up to to want to be inspire people, especially for my country where it's not a lot of opportunities. Give people hope, um, you know, give people hope, make changes, um, give guys, you know, you know some sense of leave the street life alone and go do a sport, um, go to college, do something, right? You know, do something with your life instead of, you know, get away from the street life and make you be a man and be something so your parents could look up to or be, you know, you want to be better than them and you want to pass it on to your kids and, and be a great, inspiring person. That's good. That's good. I love it. I love that answer, young fella. Keep up the good work. Mm hmm you got any more questions, Kiki? Um, I go over to you, Lou, for now. All right, but thank you. I thank you for passing the torch back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, special shout out to my man, Juan Marshall and Brian Thomas for tuning in. Thanks, guys. If y'all just getting in here, man, hit that like button, man. We got Kobe, a soldier, Breedy in the building. As I said before, he got a fight October the 1st. Get your tickets because he told me 20 minutes ago, he said it's going to be all out war. And I know. Y'all know it's well worth seeing a war in the ring. Um, my next question, Eucobia, is what keeps you humble? You got a lot of reasons to be cocky and get out of pocket. What keeps mm -hmm. you humble? Uh, my my um, life, from where I come from, Barbados, you know, growing up, 
especially before that, my 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 dad from St. Lucia. You know, we lived in St. Lucia for seven years. Moved back to Barbados. You know, life life wasn't you know life wasn't great. You know what I mean? And that that keeps me humble from where I came from. And when I went back to Barbados, you still see kids. You know what I mean? Looking for a way out or looking for opportunities. And when I'm here with a nice pair of shoes and a nice thing, I know I can go get it and they can get it. And when I look at that, that, that keeps me humble and how fortunate I am out of 280,000 people back home. And you are one of them that found a way to make it out. One of, not, you know, I'm going to say one, one of the chosen ones or one of the chosen soldiers. You remember what's Captain America? Out of mm -hmm. all of them, all of them people, he was the smallest and he got chosen to be the super soldier. I was one of them that was chosen, and I took advantage of the opportunity. But with that came a really, really, lot of responsibility, listening, you know, staying focused. And, and oh, of course, I got to always thank, you know, Floyd, Miss Lisa, and, and, you know what I mean, and my wife as well for all that opportunities and just staying humble and staying strong. That's right. That's right. Somebody just put in their super soldier. That's right. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. Now, Kobe, there's no secret. It's a fight that's about to happen. They, they say mm -hmm. that everything is pretty much about to be signed. Crawford and Spence, I'm curious of your take on it. Who wins and why? I, 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 I Well, you know, I know um, me, me, me and Coach Floyd know Earl Spence and them personally. We, we went to mm -hmm. his um, Shout out to Earl Spence. We, me and him went to Long Island to his um, His dad invited us to his um, his his 90, I think his, his, his grandma's 98th birthday. And we was out there with, with him, chopping it up. And I like him as a man, and I like him as a fighter, and I'm going with him because I know him. And I feel like he he, he the best, and he the best at 147 right now. All right. Hey, I'm 50-50 I'm with it. I haven't um, – I'm 51 Croft – no, 51 for Spence, 49 for Crawford. But this fight can go either way because you got to think, mm -hmm. both guys are built for this moment. It's going yeah. to be, this is my take on it. Whoever could be great that night, that's who's going to win. And the thing mm -hmm. is, Kobe, both of them have the attributes to be great. And that's yeah, what makes, and that's what makes for this fight. And, and both of them in shape, it's going to be an all-out war, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I'm waiting for them to sign the paperwork and make it official. Mm -hmm. So I could, you know, because right now I'm on edge because nothing has been solidified. You know, you could talk about it all day. It's not into the paperwork. It's, yeah, uh, I know. Fine. So my next question to you is, what would you change about boxing as it's there? I'll give you three things. What, what would you change about boxing? What would I change? Yes. I'm, I would, like, I would, I, I personally wouldn't change anything right now because, you know, it, give, it, give, it gives people the hunger to want it more. And if you want it, you really gotta go get it. You can't, you know, handouts. You know, some people got different paths. Some people, you know, get it easier. Some people get it harder. And that's life. Life never goes your way. So, if you want it, you gotta put in the work, and you gotta go get it. And you have to have the right team around you, and you have to have the people. You have to have good people around you. That's right. That's right. Good having good people around you will make the difference of whether you win that championship yeah. fight it makes yeah. a big difference yeah yeah so i told your baby bro that i was gonna give him a special shout out so i'm just remembering special shout out to my man jabadi breedy over in mm -hmm. barbados i told him i was gonna give him a shout out um mm -hmm. what's it like having a younger brother in the boxing game it's good man he keeps me hungry too man because he's trying to get what i got and you know when so you got a younger brother trying to get what you got you gotta stay in your a game man, i might work hard for this you want him to have the same opportunity, but you also want him to know he can get it and he got to put in the work too. It's not easy. There's no handouts out. He got to put in the work. Um, if you want to get to the top, you got to grind. You got to listen to people and you got to show them you want it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Shout out to my man, Jabali. Thanks for tuning in, champ. Uh, my next question is uh, somebody just put it in there and I should have thought about it earlier. Tank versus Brian. That's a fight. That they're talking about. So I'm just curious if that fight happened, who do you got? I got Tank. 
Yeah, I just feel Tank is the better. I, people people just think Tank is a knockout artist. He can box. He's slick. You know what I mean? And yeah, he he's a good. He's a great. He's a great fighter. He 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 got the power and he can box. So I got him all the way. Yeah, I got Tank too. I just feel like it's going. It's not going to be as easy as everybody think nah, it's going it, to be. It's gonna be a little taller guy and stuff. But you know. When he fought Barrios, it was an easy knee that he got him out of there. And we take one yeah. punch sometimes. But he's learning, you know, he learned and he, you know, he got a good team around him and he, you know, work on his craft. Yeah, that's right. And that's it, man. I, I look forward to that fight too. Um, I just feel like Tank and Ryan Garcia fight in box office, it will be bigger than mm -hmm. Spence and Crawford. Don't get me wrong, Spence and Crawford fight would be like as far as competitive wise, it'll be better because they're both even fighters. I feel like Tank is here and mm -hmm. Ryan is here. So I just feel it, like yes. Tank would be, it would be a bigger. Yeah, it would be, would be crazy. People won't. Yeah. That fight would be sell out on pay per view and, and yeah. people won't be outside. Like, yeah, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to take you back to your fight with King Tug, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. Doing that fight to build up, you know, Showtime, they have a hell of a build up for their fighters. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that was your first time really fighting on that stage, if I'm not mistaken. No, um, um, I'm well on sh on that one. Well, I fought on that stage a couple of times. I want to say three or four times. I fought on PBC as well. And I fought on right. the show. And but me, King fighting King Tug was what was my biggest fight. Yeah, because I'm not mistaken. It was a uh, title eliminator, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was a title. When Gary had the belt, um, the winner would take fight Gary Russell for the WBC. Yeah. So what do you remember most about that? That um just that whole atmosphere. Man, it was man, man, I had something to prove that night, man. <laughs> I had oh, I'm a real soldier in the war, lockdown, man. You know, I I so sometimes you let your heart get bigger than anything, you know. I made some errors in that fight, but I got up and I fought my heart out. Like a lion, like yeah, I'm like you got to kill me in here. I ain't going out like that. <laughs> but that that fight bring bring out the dog. I always had it in me, and I know it was gonna come out someday. And it's gonna come out again October first. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I look forward to it. Um, mm -hmm. I stand in a moment with that fight. I was impressed because you had every reason to give up. Mm -hmm. Usually, when a fighter gets knocked down first round and the second round. Although I thought they were flash knockdowns. I don't think it was like you was yeah, ever hurt. Knockdown, you know what I mean? My coach, Floyd, my Floyd told me back off, and I, I kind of listened, and, you know, that was on me. The second knockdown, no, I wouldn't call it a knockdown, but, you know, the referee called it a knockdown. But out of all that, I was like, man, I can still win this fight. I still felt like I won the fight. I fought all the way, yeah, all the way back. Yeah, it was, and you did, man. Just to think, it was a split decision. I know, absolutely. It was a split decision, and that, I, I, I very seldom see a fighter get knocked down twice and make it a split decision. Use this anonymous decision. He finished the race, but he finished it in a way where he unanimously lost. So to mm -hmm. finish that with a split decision, that was tough. That was um, fortitude at its best. So mm -hmm. I, I was definitely impressed with that. But uh, Kiki, do we have any more questions in the comment section? Well, we have some more questions. Okay, let's go with that. Okay. Um, Kobe, do you ever get bored when you're training? Um well, some not really, not me. Soldier never bored, man. Soldier got, <laughs> look, man, the soldier and the soldier got so much fun, so much weapons, so much things to do, man. Soldier never bored, man. We 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 stay having fun doing this, man. We when we when we know we going to war, we have so much fun going to war, man. You know, Floyd, had, you know, my coach had me running the, the the bridge in last week. You know what I mean? I might jump off of there, take a dip, and come back up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I uh, love it. The next one from Juan Marshall. He said, "When will you get that championship fight or even a title eliminator fight lined up?" Um. You know, you got to ask my t my managers, my team, my coach. But right now, the main focus is October 1st. And after October 1st, we 
we we gonna round up all them other opportunities that's gonna come. But remember, October first, we going to war. <laughs> war. Yes. <laughs> Okay, the next one is from Lorenzo Carpenter. He said, when you spar with someone, how many rounds do you go? Man, when I spar, man, we don't even got the time on, man. We going to war, man. You know, we go to war, you don't, you don't got no time. When the war is my war, <laughs> five days, six days, you might not eat for four days. You got to wait till the captain say, yeah, it's time. And that's our list. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Shout out to my man, Lorenzo Carpenter, for chiming in. That's right. You heard Kobe. He said, look. It don't, it don't ain't no time. We just go to war. Okay, we got another one. Um, Demarell. I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, but he said, What are your thoughts on undefeated boxers today? Do you think there are a lot of cherry picking involved? There's a lot of cherry picking involved. I mean, I I, I don't, I mean, I don't know because I don't really, you know, I don't really underestimate no fighter, you know, or who they fight, or whatever. It's when you get in that ring. Is what you're gonna do. It all shows. Is everything that you know. You could fight. You could fight ten bump and sparring the best and trying to get a world title shot and get win. You know what I mean? It's just you know, right management moving the fighter. And sometimes, sometimes you you want. Sometimes you're gonna have. You gonna have to fight and show yourself. And and that's the whole game. Let's see. Um, Jamal Hill. He said, "Who was your hardest fight ever?" My hardest fight ever was the, my last uh, my, my fight before this one coming up was King Thug. That was the that was the biggest opportunity, and that was on the biggest platform, biggest stage, and that was the hardest fight because you know I I, I got knocked down twice and I'm already in a hole and I had a four. A lot of people don't know you know when I got knocked down twice, I went on and wore like four four or five rounds straight. So oh, let's I say know. He went, let's say he went two knockdowns, he up already four right, mm-hmm. and I. Four my I already even it up, and whatever rounds that went down is like tic tac. You know what I'm saying? So, King Tug. That's it for now, Lou. All right, all right. Thanks for passing the torch back. Thank you. I want to stay in that moment with the fight, man, because you said something a lot of people don't know. I watched that fight probably four times in the last week or so, mm-hmm. and the jab you showed. Mm-hmm. You showed your whole arsenal that fight. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you got cocky or you you, you 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 got caught out in the wrong position. And that's why I told mm-hmm. you I thought it was a, a flash knockdown. I yeah, looked at yeah. your face. You just never really hurt like you was Mm-mm. wobbly. You took mm-hmm. your eight count and you re-engaged yourself. So when that was happening, was you thinking to yourself, like, damn, now I gotta get back. I gotta get back on the team. What what was what was going on through your mind? I Man, I was like, yeah, I said that. Damn, I won that round. <laughs> so went back, just got to go back in the corner. You know what I mean? Got to listen to instruction, and we got to get back on this. And and that's all I did. All I did was use my skills, my abilities, and listen to my corner and just try to get back in this fight. And that you did, man. That you did. If y'all just getting in here, man, hit that like button, man. Show Kobe some love. He got a fight coming up October the 1st. It's going to be all out war. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Kobe, we get ready to close this thing up, man. Is there anything that you want to tell the people out there, whether it's mm-hmm. come to your fight, is there anything that you want to put on the table out there? Man, first of all, I want to shout out everybody on my, my supporters. Shout out my team, Derek, Coach Floyd. Shout out his family. You know, shout out my family. Um, shout out you guys for the wonderful podcast. Love it. Um, Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Barbados, all of my people. Um, shout out to the young kids out here, you know, trying to figure our life out. Um, just, I just want, I just showing love, shout outs, you know, October 1st, be there, come see the soldier go to war. We going to all our war. It's going to be exciting. You know, we going to, is I can't I can't you know I can't I can't just say you just gotta come see it. I can't right. talk I come see it. Yeah. That's right, man. You got um, something to say, Derek, Derek has a question. Okay. Yeah. He wanted to know Kobe, how would it feel to fight in your hometown island of Barbados? Man, that will be a dream come through, man. That will be they the whole island, man, will be there, man. They, you know what I mean? Because you know COVID happened. 
we ain't had a boxing event in Barbados. A good boxing event in Barbados for years, man. It's been years. Boxing in Barbados is like basically dead. I'm the I'm the only string that's keeping it together, man. Like have me have a fight back on, it's it's gonna be so it's gonna it's gonna do good for the community. It's gonna do good for the people to know that I came to America, come back home and have a fight. It's gonna give people hope, it's gonna make people believe, man, I could do something, you know what I'm saying? And that would be a good opportunity. I would love, you know, hopefully one day we can make that happen. Hey, Derek, they put his face on a stamp over there. I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> they put that fight over there and win a championship. They're going to put Kobe your face on a stamp, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. For real. So uh, I want to give a special shout out. And anybody who watches my intro, my song when it first comes on, my show when it first comes on, a guy named Prophet. Prophet, if you out there listening, Put your link in the comment section. This guy um, did a fire, fire job with my intro. Um, put the link in the comment, um, Prophet. Follow that guy on YouTube, man. He has some hits on that joint. I'm pretty sure y'all would love it. Uh, Kobe, I'm going to give you your flowers while you're here, champ. I'm proud mm -hmm. of you, man. I followed your path for a long time from the last time I interviewed you. You show no, nothing but grace and humbleness. Every time mm -hmm. I see you on Instagram, Facebook, um, you show that true warrior mentality. And that's mm -hmm. something that's needed in boxing today. Mm -hmm. Pure heart, soul, everything, man. Continue success. Um, October 1st, mm -hmm. live with Light Skin Lou. We're going to be in the building. We're getting mm -hmm. our tickets. We're going to come down there. Kiki going to get the tickets. because they, they, they Women, they do all that. They get the tickets and stuff. We're going to mm -hmm. get the tickets. We're going to come down there and support you, man. Um, continue success. Um, go down there, man. And just handle your business, dog. I'm looking for a show on October 1st. I'm looking for a show. So with that being said, man, let everybody know where they can find you at. And uh, just give them your, Inst your uh, Facebook, Instagram. Y'all can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Corby and Soldier Breedy. And you know what I mean? Thanks for the interview today. And you know, I wanna you know, I wanna thank God for everything, life, breathing, and I don't wanna salute everybody out here. Everybody come out to the fight, all so American soldiers, you know, everybody that put their life on the line, because I know I was one of them and I'm still one of them, and let's go get it October first. I'm out. That's right. All right, man. We check you later, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks, so, hey, thank Kobe for coming through, champ. No problem. All right, champ. That's right. That's right, man. My guy, Kobe Abridi, man. He is ready for October the 1st. I thank you guys for continuing to support the channel every week. Um, thank you. Uh, Kiki, you have any last words? Nope, that's it. I just put his information in the chat so they can follow him on social media. That's right. That's right. So if you're out there, Thanks again, and I always have my words before I leave. Stay humble, stay hungry, and always live your life to the fullest. So with that being said, we up out of here. Peace. Peace. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nah, no profit. Yo, where you at? Where you at? My homie Lou on the mic. Them other hosts need to stop. They ain't doing it right. If you ain't turned in the loop, what you doing with your life? Conversation so sharp, it ain't your usual night. We got athletes, entrepreneurs, even celebrities. Politicians discuss nationwide discrepancies. Hardcore tackling issues in our community. Spreading on knowledge, creating an opportunity. Tune in live with light skin. Tune in live with light skin. Tune in live with light skin look. Tune in live with light skin look. Light skin look. Light skin look.